Hello there and welcome back to our series of videos on respiration. Now in the last video, we saw that there were two types of respiration. Uh, there's aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. And we compared the two. Uh, we saw that aerobic respiration occurs in the presence of oxygen, while anaerobic respiration occurs when there is no oxygen present. Another difference is that aerobic respiration produces a large amount of energy, while anaerobic respiration produces just a small amount of energy. And so I suggested to you in the last video that normally in human muscle cells, the default mode is aerobic respiration because the muscle cells would want to produce as much energy as possible. Now in this video, we're going to take a look uh, a bit more at what happens in our body uh, when we go for a run and we're going to be applying the concepts of aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration to this situation so i wonder how many of you actually go out regularly for runs and no i don't mean your weekly pe lessons that would be cheating and neither do i mean running around in the virtual world no i mean actually going out of your house once in a while for some fresh air uh, to jog or run um, but if that doesn't sound very exciting to you, I hope that after this video, after understanding what goes on in your body during a run, it might actually encourage you to go out so that you can actually see it happening uh, in yourself. Well, here are the textbook pages uh, for this part of the chapter, so do have a read of them as well. It will be very, very helpful for your understanding. Uh, so we're asking a big question. What happens uh, to our body during a run? Um, and the first question to ask is, what happens during a run to our muscle cells? Now think about it. During a run, what happens to your muscle cells? What changes occur in your muscle cells? Well, you might say that they start contracting more, right? They start to uh, contract more. And, and therefore, what do they need more of? Well, they need more energy. Right, that's exactly the first point. So during a run, the demand for energy by your muscle cells increases. Right? They need more energy in order to contract and to help you to move. And as I mentioned in the previous uh, video, muscle cells usually respire aerobically to obtain energy for their contractions. Because aerobic respiration, as you remember, produces a large amount of energy. So as long as oxygen is present, muscles will respire aerobically to obtain energy for their contractions during your run. So as a result, the demand for oxygen also increases during a run. Right? So during a run, the demand for energy increases and the demand for oxygen increases because muscle cells usually respire aerobically. So, how does our body adjust itself so that it's able to meet this increased demand for energy and oxygen? Well, think back on the last time you ran. What changes took place in your body? More specifically, what changes took place to your heart rate and to your breathing rate? Well, the answer is simple, right? Firstly, your heart rate probably increased. Right? And, and there are many things that could cause your heart rate to increase. You know, you could be really anxious about an exam or the, the goal that you like just walk past you. But a few things make your heart rate increase, like running, right? If you run, your heart rate really, really increases. And besides that, of course, you start to realize that you breathe faster. So your, your breathing rate increases. You, you know, you're breathing in and out faster. Uh, and why is that? Why does your heart rate increase? And why does your breathing rate increase? Think about it for a while. What does that have to do with oxygen and energy demand? So, the reason why your heart rate and breathing rate increase is to increase the rate of oxygen transport to your muscle cells. So, your heart starts to beat faster, right? So that blood can be transported to your muscle cells at a faster rate. Uh, to transport oxygen to your muscle cells, right? So the faster your heart beats, the faster the rate of oxygen transport to your muscles. And at the same time, the faster your heart beats, the faster 
the rate of removal of carbon dioxide from your muscle cells. So your muscle cells, which are aerobically respiring, are producing carbon dioxide, and that needs to be removed to, uh, to the heart. Now, at the same time, your breathing rate needs to increase. And why is that? You need to take in oxygen from your lungs. So let me just draw some lungs. So here are your lungs where oxygen comes to your body. Uh, so you need to breathe faster to bring oxygen faster into your lungs so that oxygen can be transported to your heart. And of course, your lungs breathe faster as well so that carbon dioxide can be removed uh, faster uh, from your body as well. So both the heart rate and breathing rate increase to increase the rate of oxygen transport and to increase the rate at which carbon dioxide is removed from your muscle cells. Alright, so everything is great, right? Your heart rate increases, your breathing rate increases, and your muscles get enough oxygen so they can carry out aerobic respiration and produce large amounts of energy for you to keep on running. But what happens if our muscles do not receive enough oxygen? Now to answer this question, we need to think about the times where you run for a really long distance or maybe you go for a very intense run or a very intense sprint. You know, how do your muscles feel after that sort of experience? Now, if you're normal like me, you would say that they start to feel rather sore or they start to ache. Now why do we feel this soreness and why do we feel this ache in our muscles? Now it turns out one of the reasons why we feel soreness in our muscles it's because a certain chemical builds up in our muscles. And that chemical that builds up in our muscles is called lactic acid. You know, runners will often say that, you know, lactic acid builds up in their muscles over time. And of course, this chemical, lactic acid, should probably sound familiar to you. Because in our last video, we saw this lactic acid appear in our equation for anaerobic respiration. Right, so let's look at it a bit deeper. So why is it that you know we experience this soreness and aches in our muscles after a while? Here's why. Now the reason is that sometimes the maximum rate of oxygen transport and aerobic respiration is still not enough to meet the energy demands of muscle cells. Now what I'm trying to say here is that imagine you're running and your heart rate has already increased and it's, and it's increased to the maximum rate. Your heart is beating as hard as fast as it can, and you are breathing as fast as you can. So the maximum rate of oxygen transport is already occurring. And the maximum rate of aerobic respiration is already occurring. But even with this maximum, it is still not enough to meet the energy demands of your muscle cells. The muscles need more energy, right? And sometimes this happens during a sprint. Because when you sprint, uh, you just need a huge amount of energy in a short period of time. So even the maximum rate of aerobic respiration and oxygen transport cannot meet the energy demands. So what happens in this situation? Well, in this situation, muscle cells may rely on anaerobic respiration to produce energy, right? Because oxygen transport and aerobic respiration is not sufficient. So muscle cells may rely on anaerobic respiration to produce energy. So as a result, lactic acid is produced, right? Because it's anaerobic respiration. And this lactic acid results in a feeling of fatigue in your muscles, right? Tiredness, soreness, aching. Now, the other thing to say is that we also say that an oxygen debt is incurred. Uh, so what does oxygen debt mean? Now, let me give a simple example to explain. Now, imagine that you are studying very hard for the exams. So what do you do? You make yourself stay awake, right? And you don't sleep. You deprive yourself of sleep. So you deprive yourself of sleep in order to get the A+. Right? But what happens after the exam? Well, after the exam, you're very, very tired, so you get your A+. But after the exam, you're very tired, so you need to sleep a lot more. Right? You need to pay back your sleep debt. Right? You have a sleep debt. You owe your body sleep. Now, in the same way, now... Your muscle cells are producing energy to help you run, right? You're running, and your muscle cells are producing energy. Well, normally they need oxygen to produce energy, right? Through aerobic respiration. But in this case, the muscles are not getting enough oxygen to produce energy. 
but they can still work for you. So they are, you're running, 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 but you're not giving your muscles the oxygen that they need. But they use anaerobic respiration to produce energy. Well, you'll see that after the run, you will still need to repay the oxygen debt. That means you owe your muscle cells oxygen. So you still need to give back to them the oxygen that you owe them. So you need to pay back that oxygen debt. All right, which brings us nicely to the end of the run. So what happens after the run? What happens during recovery? Right, why do your muscles stop aching eventually? And also, why does your heart rate and breathing rate remain elevated for a while? Well, if you've ever ran before, you know that after you stop running, your heart still continues to beat fast and your breathing still tends to be kind of fast for a while and takes some time to go back to rest. So why is that? Well, it turns out that it has to do with paying off the oxygen uh, debt. So your breathing rate and your heart rate remain higher for a while after your run in order to pay off the oxygen debt to your muscle cells. Remember your muscle cells were working very hard, producing energy, um, but without oxygen. So now after the run, right, they need oxygen. So you owe them oxygen. So you got to pay off that debt. So your heart rate and your breathing rate remain high so that you can continue to transport oxygen to your muscle cells to repay off the oxygen debt. Now at the same time, lactic acid is also transported to the liver and converted back uh, to glucose, right? which is the starting material for respiration. So the lactic acid is removed from your muscles, transported to the liver and converted back to glucose. So because this lactic acid is removed from your muscles, uh, the aching goes away after some time. But of course sometimes you continue to ache the next day and the day after and that's because uh, there are other reasons why your muscles ache as well. It might not just be lactic acid. Right, so we explored this question uh, in the previous video, and I'm just going to end off uh, with it. Um, so in a sprint, would your energy normally come from anaerobic or aerobic respiration? Uh, and that sort of short burst, intense uh, energy demand, intense oxygen demand, usually the energy comes from anaerobic respiration. However, why is this... Only, why is this able to only support you for a short time? It means for a sprint. Uh, because we know that anaerobic respiration only produces a small amount of energy and it also produces lactic acid. Right? And your body can't have too much lactic acid, otherwise it's not healthy. So um, yes, you can sprint based on anaerobic respiration alone, uh, but not for long. Now in a marathon, 21 km run, does the energy come mainly from anaerobic or aerobic respiration? Now in this case, the energy can come mainly from aerobic respiration. Right? Because, why? Because the energy demand right, in a certain amount of time can be met by the increase in your heart rate and breathing rate. So you increase your heart rate, increase your breathing rate, provides oxygen to your muscles, and it's able to meet their demands in a period in that certain period of time. Whereas in a sprint, in a short period of time, there's such a great energy and oxygen demand that the breathing rate and heart rate alone cannot provide for it. Right? The increase in the heart rate and breathing rate cannot provide for it. So you need to use anaerobic respiration. Alright, we're just going to end off very quickly uh, with this slide. There's also another form of anaerobic respiration which occurs in yeast and it's important for making drinks like this. This is beer. So let me just quickly show you the equation. So in yeast, anaerobic respiration is also called fermentation. Uh, in the case of yeast, glucose is broken down to carbon dioxide and ethanol. Right, This is the alcohol component of uh, beer and stuff. So yeast, in the pre when there's no oxygen present, yeast can break down glucose to carbon dioxide and ethanol with a small amount of energy. Uh, this is different from anaerobic respiration in muscles, where glucose is broken down to lactic acid and a small amount of energy. Right? Just, just for your awareness that there's two types of anaerobic respiration, but focus just on the human one in human muscle cells. Okay, so let's end off with you having to do some work. So read your textbook, these pages, and 
Name some examples of energy consuming processes in organisms and also you can take a look at the chemical equation for anaerobic respiration. Alright, that's all. See you going for a run.